Welcome to my lecture online. Our next example appears pretty simple, but it can be very complicated to find the answer. It actually doesn't have to be. There's several ways in which we can actually get to the answer, and we're going to show you two different ways. The first way is going to be graphical, using this example right here, and then in the next video, we're going to use the equation of kinematics to try to come up with the very same solution. The problem is as follows. We drop a ball, and after it's fallen a certain distance h, it has reached the velocity v. Then the question is, how much farther, let's call it small h here, does the object have to drop in order to reach the velocity twice as fast? Of course, it's going to be greater distance, but how much greater? What will small h be compared to large h? So we're going to try to solve this in a graphical method using the velocity versus time graph. So we'll draw a graph like this. The vertical axis is velocity, and that will be in terms of meters per second. And then on the horizontal axis, which is time, and that will be in seconds. And even though we don't know what the actual velocity and time is, velocity in, in terms of meters per second, and time in terms of seconds, we'll know the ratio of those velocities. So we know that since the acceleration will be due to the acceleration, or the velocity will be increasing because of the acceleration due to gravity, we're going to need a graph that looks like this, where the slope is representative of the acceleration due to gravity. Now, to make things a little bit simpler, let's just call everything a positive quantity. We're simply going to call velocity positive because we want the magnitude of velocity. We're going to call the distance or displacement positive because, we, again, we just want to deal with the magnitudes, which means that the slope here of that graph is going to be representative of the absolute value of g, which is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. And we call it a positive, again, because we're simply going to call it positive velocities. So after a certain amount of time has elapsed, let's call it t1, then we will have reached a certain velocity v, and we'll have covered a certain distance, let's call it a1. a1 is going to be equal to the distance covered by that motion, which in this case, let me give it a little bit more room, a1 is going to be equal to h. Now, since the acceleration is constant, 9.8 meters per second square, it will take twice as long to reach double the velocity. So, if we then go to T2, and T2 will be twice T1, we will have reached twice the velocity. So, this will be 2 times V after having dropped twice as long. The question now is, how much farther did the object fall? And when we do it graphically, the answer is actually pretty simple. Because what we need to do here is draw a line straight across like this. And then we can see that this triangle area here is exactly the same as this triangle area here. And then if I draw a small little line across here, notice that if we take this area and this area and this area, those are all exactly the same shape. Therefore, they represent the exact same distance traveled. But in this case, there's three of them versus only one of them, which means we have to fall three times as far to reach twice the velocity as we have to fall to reach the velocity equal to v. So therefore, we can say that, that h is therefore equal three times the distance we have to travel to reach v. We need three times as much distance to get to the velocity equal to 2v. So simply graphically, it's really easy to see that the additional distance traveled, h, small h, is simply three times the distance needed to get to v. You need three times as much distance to get to 2v. And graphically, that's really easy to do. Now, we're going to do this again, but in this case, we're going to use the equation of kinematics to see how to do it in that way.